In the previous two videos, we found heteroscedasticity and functional issues in the ORS model. In this video, we will transform the outcome variable to logarithm and add the quadratic term and interaction term to the model. We will use the margins and margins plot commands to obtain and visualize the prediction of the outcome variable and the marginal effects of the explanatory variables. Let's open the National Longitudinal Survey of Women dataset. We regress wage on grade, age, married, union, and race in the last two videos. Now let's generate a new variable, log wage, which is equal to the log of wage. We rerun the regression model using the log wage as the outcome variable. Here I use the prefix i dot in front of categorical or dummy variables and use the prefix c dot before continuous variables. Let's execute it. We find that the r squared rises from 0.21 to 0.24. This model fits the data better. Keep in mind that the interpretation of the coefficients is different. When the log of wage is used as an outcome variable, the coefficients are the percentage change of wage when the explanatory variable increases by one unit. For example, one more grade completed increases wages by 8.8% or precisely 9.1% on average holding other factors fixed. To visualize the relationship, we use the margins and margins plot commands. We use the add option to produce the predictive values of log wage at certain values of explanatory variables. In this case, grade. Grade ranges from 0 to 18. We type margins comma, and the option add. We put the range of grades in parentheses. In this case, we want to compute the predicted log wage between grade 0 and grade 18 in increment of 1. We now get the predicted value of log wage at different values of grades. After the command margins, we usually use the command margins plot to draw a graph. Let's go ahead and do that. The log wage increases with the grades completed. We can specify that the predicted log wages are computed as certain values of the other explanatory variables, such as single white union members. Notice that if we do not specify the values, the prediction are computed at the means of the explanatory variables. Next, let's add a quadratic term of grade to the model. There are two ways to do that. We can generate a new variable equal to the grade square and add the squared grade to the model. Or we can use the hash command. Two hashes mean both the grade and the grade square in the model. We type regress log wage c dot grade two hashes and c dot grade and then the other explanatory variables. Here's the result. How to interpret the coefficients? The coefficient of grade is positive, meaning that log wage increases with the grade. The quadratic term is also positive, meaning that log wage increases with the grade at an increasing rate, although the quadratic term is not significant. 
We also use the margins and margins plot commands to visualize the relationship between log wage and grade. Since the quadratic term is log significant, we see an almost straight line. If the quadratic term is significant, we will see a convex curve. For dummy explanatory variables, we can use the margins command to produce two curves of the predicted outcome for the two groups defined by that dummy. For example, we may want to know how the log wage changes with grace for union members and for non-union members. We can do that by including an interaction term between grade and union in the model. Then we use the margins and margins plot command to visualize the relationship. We type margins, union, comma, and then the gray range for the add option. Notice that the dummy variable union follows the margins command. Let's execute that. We see that the relationship between log wage and grade differs by union membership. The union members have a flatter slope than the non-union members. For the poorly educated workers, union membership helps them earn significantly more wages. For the highly educated workers, union membership effect decreases. For the workers with more than 16 grades completed, the union membership doesn't matter. The confidence intervals overlap in that area. In other words, the educational effect on wages is higher for non union members than union members, and the effects converge as the education level increases.